Hi, my name is Annie Reiser, and I'm here in my home studio in Estes Park, Colorado, and I would like to welcome you to another of my uh, YouTube Lunchtime Tangle sessions. Today we're going to be working on a tangle that is really beautiful and organic. It's one of the headquarter tangles from Zen Tangles. And um, yeah, I'm going to switch my screen and we'll get going on this. So today I am using um, some materials that are a little bit different than what I normally do. Usually I use white paper or a Zentangle tile with a black micron pen, graphite pencil, and a blender. Today I'm going to switch it up and use one of these beautiful gray tiles from the Zentangle company. Um, I am going to be using an 05 dark blue micron pen, an 01 micron pen, a lighter color blue, For shading, instead of a graphite pencil, we're gonna be using this beautiful blue pastel chalk called Bright Blue, and it's from Generals. For our highlights, we are going to be using a Generals Charcoal White. And I also will be blending with two different blending stumps. One is for the actual charcoal, and the other one I, I have saved for the white charcoal so that I don't contaminate it. I might be going at this a little bit with my Art and Fly um, uh, white gel pen. So let's get started. First of all, I'd like to write down the name of our tangle because um, if you need to go on tanglepatterns.com and look up the step out, which is the deconstruction of the pattern, you can do that by noting the name and searching for it. It's called Ravel and it's by the Zentangle headquarters company. So I'm going to start out with my light blue pen. And we're going to be using one of those strokes that we use very often. In fact, we just did our last um, Denver Botanic Gardens lunchtime session with the S stroke. It's going to be a, a long, flat S curve. So if you just want to kind of practice that on a piece of scratch paper to get into the mood, you can go ahead and do that. We're gonna not do strings and, or we're not gonna do corner dots, borders or strings today. We're just gonna build this tangle organically. And we're gonna start, I'm gonna start here pretty much in the middle because I'll show you what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna make this sort of a, a centerpiece um, for, as a, a tile. And I do need my glasses. So we're gonna start with an orb and another small orb about that far away. And starting at the top, we're gonna to drive around that orb, jump off into this flat S curve and join up with the, the bottom orb like that. Then we're gonna do what's called kind of a tethered um, aura. I say tethered because we're going to join it from here. We're not going to aura it all the way on the outside like this, but we're going to start up here, widen at the midsection, and then join it back down here. We want to make this midsection a little bit larger than the rest of our tangle, and I'll tell you why at the end. Okay, so now we're going to just add some aura or echo lines on either side and keep bowing out until we get this kind of a bud shape. And you can make this shape as elongated or wide as you wish. I think I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna turn my tile and then I'm gonna put another orb down here. Take off and land. Make my midsection and then start aura lines or echo lines to build up that ravel bud. Oh, I guess I could do another one. Doing it again. Take off and land. 
So this is a very, very typical um, stroke pattern that we use often in Zentangle for many, many tangles. The one we just did called Kringle uses it, Cadent uses it, Dragonair uses it, so many. So if you, you know, get this stroke down, you will become very proficient at many different tangles. Wide section. So I'm always trying to start at the top in one place and end in one place that is creating this sort of self-shaded area. I'm gonna just keep going in a circle and I'm gonna make something like a floral centerpiece. So when we have this area, we have to imagine how our line would go behind. So we start up here, draw in the air, make our S curve and end at the bottom. Always bowing out to either side to make that bud shape. Do another one here. Again, I would take off here and land. Take off. So this is already working a little bit like a flower or a centerpiece, but this is a tangle that you can you can grow organically, <clears throat> however your string dictates it for you or however you want to do it. So I'm gonna do another, another ravel out here. You could connect these two. very much that concept of crazy cadent, if you've ever done that. Uh, let's do one here. And then what's kind of fun is doing um, some overlap. So I'm gonna use this as a starting dot, but I'm gonna draw to this one here and go underneath this section that I already drew. Layering and overlap is always a beautiful compositional element, especially when it comes to our shading, because we're gonna be doing some really dramatic shading on this tangle. Oh, let's go over here. I, I do just love this because I'm not planning this in the least bit. I am just letting my tangle develop as it wants to. And of course I am using some 
compositional um, savvy, if you will, uh, when I'm placing my dots so that I, I get kind of a balanced composition here. Uh, let's go, let's go here and under this section. So it's always important to kind of let what patterns are on your paper dictate where you're gonna continue. And then I think I wanna join this one with something over here. You can make this as open and lacy as you want with a lot of that kind of negative space showing through like this, or you can make it more dense um, by lining your buds up closer together. It's really fun to experiment. I'm gonna go over here. This is also very similar to a tangle pattern called garlic cloves. It's just a little bit more uh, cadent like, but I think if you know garlic cloves, this will come very easily. Okay, I think I need something down here. And of course, by varying the, the distance between your two orbs that are forming your ravel, you can create some variation. You can also vary the width of your lines. Um, you can make them very uniform, or you can do some that are further apart. You can add thick and thin. Uh, let's go, I'm kind of liking this almost S shapes. I'm gonna go with one more down here. Take your time. Draw with a light touch and breathe. Enjoy this wonderful, meditative, repetitious S curve. Um, I'm gonna put something over here. really bellow those out and maybe one more up here give it that almost total diagonal line draw in the air come down and connect wider at the center and tapered in the end Yeah, I kind of like that negative space here. We could put some little um, embellishments in there like our fescues or something else. So I'm going to now uh, show you what Maria does on this center flower. She starts adding embellishments in that midsection like this stripe 
which is actually a pattern we call um, beetle juice. And I am going to also accentuate that midsection with this darker pen. So I'm going to do that on all of those just to give it a little bit of interest. And I'm going to do some more beetle juice right here. It's just almost as if this bud is opening up and showing its fruits on the inside. I'd like to do some orbs on this one. You can do whatever you want in this little sliver. Of course, if you do the orbs, make sure you fill in those little triangular interstices so that they pop. And I would like to go and accent that center. Um, I may not fill in this midsection on all of my rattle buds. I'm going to keep them more focused here in the center. Oh, I think that's actually that bud. So this one I will do orbs. I like this 05 pen. Um, it works really quickly for filling in things like the striping and creating a thicker line rather than the thin O1. So you've got that lively line look going on. Okay, so now I just need to continue on adding the dark in those bigger midsections. And with these beginning and end orbs that pair, you could also um, you could darken those in. And I guess this one is like right here. Gotta think sometimes. I got them all. Oh, there's one. Missed this one up here. All right, so now comes the exciting part, the shading. And today we're going to be using this um, bright blue General's Pastel Chalk. And what we're gonna do, it's pretty easy shading. We're gonna just add some of that chalk around these orbs. Of course, not out here, just in, I'm staying within the floral arrangement. And what this does, it really kind of um, tufts the look. So these, these look like they're joined and tufted like a tufted quilt or Chesterfield couch or pillow. Um, so 
So we're just gonna do that first. Take my blue blending stump. Oh, I missed one. And then we're just going to draw that chalk into this center. Always kind of saving out a highlight in the middle. See where it's nice and light in there. You don't want to muddy that up because really dark darks, really light lights make for a beautiful piece. It's what we always judged on in our botanical illustration program and our critiques. We have to have a lot of value change, right? And I am vigorously moving my blending stump, but I am not pressing hard with it. I'm also doing this very quick and dirty. I want you to take your time and enjoy this part. It is actually my favorite part of, of Zentangling is the shading because it's the final stage where you're making everything like just come together and polish it up and just give it some love. The line work is wonderful and relaxing, but the shading is what for me makes this into a little piece of art. Very satisfying to see the three dimension growing. Just like with the graphite, this uh, tortillon, this blending stump, does get the chalk on it and you can sometimes just use that without loading it again for other places that you want to shade. So another important part to shade is where our petals begin to overlap. And for example, like right here, we want to push this, this petal is on top of this one, and we want to push this one to the back more. So we're going to shade where that meets. Same here. A little bit here, some here. And you don't really have to do this on every single overlap. Um, and the reason is your eye fills in. You start training it to see that depth and that overlap area. Here. This could use a little more form. So this is what we call our light on form, right? We're trying to make this as three dimensional as we can so that we really see that these buds are bulbous. Really important is this section here that it's nice and dark. Okay, I think that's good enough for a demo. So then comes the white charcoal to give it some highlight. It's gonna be even more shimmering than just what we've saved out. See how the gray tile is now really starting to show its color before it looked almost just like a dull white, but now you can really with the bright white hitting it, you can really see the difference. And look how our little buds are just like popping up 
off the page. And notice when I'm um, highlighting this, I am not just running over the side, you know, over all of the lines. I'm trying to kind of go in between um, so that we don't lose those lines. You can always go back and pick them back up again or leave some, you know, shaded in. But I like to kind of stay in between. And just like with the shading, you really don't have to do every single highlight, but it, this is so much fun that you might find yourself wanting to. So now I've got my blending stump that's specifically saved out for the white, and I am going to go ahead and knock that down a little bit, kind of make it a more subtle, um, subtle highlight. And it will eventually blend in with some of the blue charcoal or the blue chalk to make a bit of a gradient. I also want my little perfs, those little orbs that we drew to be a little bit more three-dimensional. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill those with the chalk and then shade a little bit with the blue. This is a pretty new tangle for me. Um, I love it because of its organic form, obviously. I think we all are drawn to that. And I plan to use it in a lot of my like rituals and tangle tiles. I'm gonna get maybe some of this charcoal that's left on my stump. will be just perfect for adding a little bit of shading just to make these orbs less flat. And again, doesn't have to be every single one. And then this is obviously a pattern that has just kind of grown on its own. It's what we call an organic pattern, uh, rather than following a string that we put down with our pencil. So um, you can add some other little things here. I've got my little white jelly roll to add some bright highlights here. Maybe some in the corner of some of the orbs. Like I said, this is quick and dirty for the demo, but you take your time and make this very neat and clean. So what you can do to loosen this up, um, we can take our one of our pens and do some things such as, oh, I think I will put some up here, some little fescues. Spunky. Coming up this here. I 
And you can add more there. You can add a uh, little more orbs. Those are always fun. Just to give it another texture. So it's almost very marine-like, kind of like a little sea creature, right? You can uh, do lots of different things. So before I forget, which I usually do, always the last part of your drawing on your Zentangling is to take a moment to just look at your piece, turn it this way and that, decide how you would like your audience to view it. And that's where you would put your chop in the right hand corner. Your chop being nothing more than your initials. And then on the back, you want to sign and date. It's always important to note the date because you'd be surprised at um, when you're looking back at your Zentangle tiles, you can really see um, an improvement in your line quality. You can kind of remember where you were that day. And you can also take your pen and go around and clean up some areas, maybe make some thick and thin lines. Here's an overlap, so that could be nice and thick there. All kinds of things that you can do to polish it even further. This is what Maria Thomas, one of the co-founders of the Zentangle movement, calls giving your tiles some love. And it really does make a difference at the end. So everyone, that is Ravel. Here's one more sample for you. Like I said, I don't have a lot of these because I, I um, didn't discover this for a while. Um, just make sure this is focused for you. So that one is on one of my watercolor backgrounds. Actually, it's um, Lindy's Magical Shakers die. It's a, it's a die. This, this pattern here is called Organza. That's a really fun one to kind of weave throughout. And it's fun to put the jelly roll on the really bright backgrounds. So there's Ravel. I also want to ask you to, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up on YouTube and um, I would really appreciate you subscribing to my site. And here is Zentangle.com where you can get more information on the Zentangle movement, tanglepatterns.com for the step outs. And this is my website where you can subscribe for class announcements. And also, if you would like to share what you've learned today on my private Facebook page, it's called Annie's Botangle Alumni. And it's really fun to see what everybody comes up with. There are some really talented people out there just giving us all kinds of inspiration. So I hope you join me again for another session of Lunchtime Tangles. But that's it for today. So bye for now.